Last year, I am also one of the many predictors out there that almost got 100% perfect, but only ended up missing one category. And I don't think I'm never going to top that over because no one in our lives probably ever gets a perfect in their Oscar predictions. Well, this is it, ladies and gentlemen, the final predictions for the 2022 two or 2023 movie award season honoring the films of this past year with the 95th academy awards taking place this sunday hosted by jimmy kimmel on abc so we have got all 23 categories to go we went through all award show ceremonies from the golden globes to the critics choice to the director's guild to the baftas to the Producers Guild, to the Screen Actors Guild, to the Independent Spirits, to the Writers Guild, and now here at the Oscars. As I will be predicting all 23 categories to see who I think will win. Some of these are not as easy to predict because some of these are legit races. And for the first time in a long time, I don't know when, that there was no winning streaks for any of the acting prizes. That is insane, and not even a, a sweep for director this year, not even a pitcher sweep this year. I mean, we got four movies that have pitcher wins, and ten movies are up against this for this year's Oscars, and which one of the ten will take on the prize? So for those who are new to my channel, um, who have never seen any of my previous years of predicting the Oscars, let alone last year, I go by the order of when the, of the nomination announcements, which of course, if you saw the announcements with Riz Ahmed and Allison Williams, um, you know which order I'm going to go through. So let's start up with supporting actress here. And oh boy, we do have a three-way race between Angela Bassett and Black Panther Wakanda Forever, who won the Golden Globe and the Critics' Choice, Jamie Lee Curtis and Everything Ever World Once, who won SAG, and Carrie Condon in the Banshees of Inner Sharon, who won BAFTA. So we all thought this was going to be a Bassett sweep, but uh, the two big industry awards didn't really took to it. Now, Bassett could be the Regina King thing, where she could just win the Globe and Critics' Choice and still win the Oscar. But not really as Regina King, because Bassett was at SAG at BAFTA. Curtis, I don't know if she would win just because of SAG. Now, all three of them like have pros and cons. Like, for Bassett, it would be not also for... Um, the pros would be the Globe and Critics' Choice win. Um, and the con... And obviously, she has a bit, kind of a bit of a, a career that's been overlooked. But the con is, obviously, she lost the two big industry prizes. And she's in a, a very small performance, Armin's, that only has two major scenes, and that's it. Curtis does have the SAG. Her con is that she has not won anything else. And... Also, a lot of people prefer Stephanie Hsu over her, which Stephanie Hsu won Breakthrough Performance at The Spirits. Um, and I don't know what it is, but maybe there might be some voters that think, well, she also starred in one of the worst movies of the year, Halloween Ends. I don't know they would go for that just because of her year or I, of that she did this year. But remember, for those who have been watching my prediction, that I've been kind of saying that Carrie Condon would kind of pull a Mark Rylance thing. And it's more like likely going to happen because Condon is like, kind of like with Mark Rylance, Condon was really well unknown to the film industry until this movie. Kind of like what Rylance was with Bridge of Spies because not a lot of big people, mainly here in the U.S., don't even know who Mark Rylance was. And then he wins this Oscar for Bridge of Spies, and now he has, like, big major roles, like, in films like, let alone some of them are pitcher nominees or potential pitcher contenders, like Dunkirk, uh, The Trial of the Chicago 7, um, Don't Look Up, and even um, this year, although it didn't get any nominations, uh, Bones and All. And Carrie Condon, um, obviously, she, he, she's well-known in England and Ireland for her playworks, like Rylance was, and it wasn't until... A particular movie which got her an Oscar got her into major big movie roles. So I think if, and this could be the only chance the Banshees of Inner Sharon might win something, 
I'm actually going to say that my original bet is going to happen. I think Harry Condon is going to be the Mark pulling a Mark Rylance, where she wins the BAFTA and wins the Oscar. And you can even go into, like, Alan Arkin Little in Little Miss Sunshine. So, yeah, I'm going to be saying Carrie Condon here for the Banshees of Inner Sharon. Costume design, it is a battle between Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Elvis. Um, Black Panther does have critics' choice, but then again, Ruth Carter has one for not just the first Black Panther, but also for Dolomite Is My Name at that ceremony. Um, and, but, and also the first film did win this one. And it's ironic, she presented the costume design category last year, so that's very interesting. Um, so it could be a potential highlight to get a woman of color win twice in this category, which is a possibility. But then you also have Elvis, with Catherine Martin being a triple nominee this year, because she's not just in for costume design, but she's also in for production de production design and best picture. Um, because of the BAFTA, and I think with some of the major costume designer guild wins, I and if the fact they need to give her something, because she's unlikely to win two of those, including Pitcher, I'm going to say Elvis here. Best sound, I am going to say All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, Top Gun Maverick still could potentially win this, but I think uh, the BAFTAs kind of helped it out, especially with that film winning Pitcher over there. So, um... Yeah, but Top Gun still could win this, but I'm saying all quiet. Original score. We do not have a clear front runner here. Um, Golden Globes went with Babylon. Critics' Choice re randomly went with Tar, which of course was not eligible for the Oscars. And then the BAFTAs went with All Quiet on the Western Front. So yeah, I tried to do a random prediction of the BAFTAs with the Banshees of Inner Sharon, which that didn't happen, but it could potentially win here if. Uh, Carrie Condon does not win Supporting Actress. Like, it's either this or Supporting Actress where Banshees could potentially win. But I am going to be kind of making a big bet here. Not a big major bet, but a big um, risky guess, I would say, because this could be the only place where they can give this movie something. And you might know what I'm talking about, because... And this may be his last chance of potentially winning an Oscar because you know for a fact he might not win next year for Indiana Jones. Unless they could because he hadn't win for Raiders of the Lost Ark. But I think John Williams is going to get his sixth Oscar. And I think this is the only place they can actually award the Fablemans something. So I am going to be saying John Williams for the Fablemans. Adapted screenplay, this is now pretty confident Sarah Pauly is going to win for Women Talking. She won both the Critics' Choice and the Writers Guild, the only major competition she has is Edward Berger, Leslie Patterson, and Ian Stokel for All Quiet on the Western Front. The problem is with All Quiet is that it was not an either Critics' Choice or WGA. And also Women Talking to Condon wasn't at BAFTA either. So, and also it didn't win the um, Globe for Screenplay because that was more in the original films. Um, but yeah, I think Polly is definitely going to become an Oscar winner here. But then again, they this could be their only chance to give Edward Berger something here because he's not up for director. And of course, for international feature, the nominations for the country and not for the director and producers. So um, they could give Edward Berger this for All Quiet, but I'm going to be still saying women talking. Original, it is kind of like McDonough is a little bit on the edge there for the Banshees of Inner Sharon, winning both the Globe and the BAFTA, but he did that same route as three billboards did. And Get Out, which of course won the Oscar, won both a Critics' Choice and WGA, which of course the latter, McDonough's not a member of the Guild. And since the Daniels went in that route, winning both Critics' Choice and WGA, and even at the Spirits, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Schreiner are going to be winning one of their three Oscars, um, wins they're going to get for everything at World Once, and it's going to start for original screenplay. Best live action short, An Irish Goodbye did win uh, the BAFTA, but the fact that Alfonso Cuaron is nominated here for Late Pupil because he's a producer in the film, kind of like with Riz Ahmed last year, I think they're going to go with Late Pupil just because of Cuaron's name on it. Um, and it is um, very interesting that it is on Disney+. Plus, and I don't know when it was the last time a live action short from Disney the last time a, Dis a live action short from Disney was nominated and won this category. That was just, that's insane. But 
Karan Nelson also kind of has a bit tying with Brauna now with a record for nominated in the most multiple categories now. And because of his name involvement, I think, even though it's not a really critically praised short from one of the reviews I've seen, I think like people will just win because of Karan's name on it. Best Animated Short? A lot of people assumed the boy, the bull, the fox, and the horse would potentially win this one. And because it did win the BAFTA, and also won the Annie Award for Special Production, with Ice Merchants winning uh, Best Animated Short. Um, however, if we're kind of going the route of the windshield wiper last year, unless they're not going to do it again, because of it's one of the, having that unique title approach... I'm going to say my year of dicks. I think that that can actually happen just to prove a little bit how animation can also be used for adults, as we saw with last year's winning score beating the frontrunner, Robin Robin. Um, maybe also the length could also be a big issue with the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse might not win this. Um, but we'll just have to wait to see. I'm not really good at predicting shorts because I can't get a perfect three out of three. So I'm going to make a random guess and predict, well, not really a guess, but more an upset and say my year of dicks. Supporting actor is probably one of the easiest categories to predict, ki Hu Kwan in Everything Ever World at once. Although Barry Keegan did win the BAFTA, we kind of know with his win, he's definitely second place. It's just ki Hu Kwan went everywhere else except for the BAFTA, including the Spirit Award for Supporting Performance. For the useless original song category, because if I'm correct, four of the five of these are generic credit songs, um, you would think the obvious go-to choice would be Not To Not To from RRR, because it won both the Globe and Critics' Choice. But I do got a question. Um, do I think the Super Bowl might have affected some votes? Specifically with Rihanna, because... I don't know how many Academy members watched the Super Bowl, or specifically the Super Bowl halftime performance, but did that Super Bowl halftime performance kind of build a, big, a, a bigger campaign for Rihanna to win an Oscar? Because she is nominated for Lift Me Up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And if I'm correct, both Lady Gaga and I think Phil Collins were the, are the only two artists I can think of, if I remember, that... Both performed in a Super Bowl year and both won an Oscar. Unless if I'm mistaking on any others, but I think that Super Bowl performance might have helped probably the campaigning a bit, even if it wasn't primarily campaigning for it. But since it could be a potential big highlight and probably the last one to perform, um, and because with RRR getting its only nomination, and since if Black Panther will kind of forever might not win for Bassett or for costume design, because it's guaranteed not, it's not going to win visual effects, of course, I think it will win here. So I'm going to pull an upset, and I'm going to say Rihanna is going to become an Oscar winner with Lift Me Up from Black Panther will kind of forever. So not also Ludwig Gornson will win both, um, be kind of undefeated, getting a second win, but also Thames and Ryan Coogler would also become Oscar winners as well. Documentary feature, three films are kind of battling it out. The original frontrunner, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, won the Spirit Award without the two other contenders that were not there. Fire of Love won the Director's Guild for documentary. And Nelvani won both the BAFTA and the Producer's Guild. And Although both that and House Made of Splinters have two subjects that are kind of almost like builds up to the Russian-Ukrainian war, the HBO one is the more uh, one they're, they're going to go more likely toward. So I am going to be saying Nelvani here. Documentary short, the only category I, I got wrong last year because I went with When We Were Bullies instead of The Queen of Basketball. Um, I'm going to go with Stranger at the Gate because of its subject matter that really could help in today's society because we've been seeing a lot of hate speeches and hate towards major, major uh, minorities and other rights around the country, especially in bad states, especially in Florida. Um, it It is kind of a shame aim, but aim that we're dealing with this, but I think a short like that a sh of a former Marine who is now, who used to hate Muslims, now has a great friendships with them it's just that's definitely going to be something that i think we'll have a lot of votes in support of
The second easiest category to predict for this year's Oscars, international feature, Germany's All Quiet on the Western Front, the Pitcher nominee. The only thing we know for a fact is that Argentina 1985 is second because it won the Golden Globe. Animated feature, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio has won everything. All the animated feature wins, and it is going to complete its sweep. But of course, people are wondering, is there going to be that Disney bias buildup if Turning Red's going to win, if the Academy thinks is a genre of animation is a genre for kids and not a medium of cinema? Hopefully, who is ever presenting that award must make sure not to say that because Del Toro will be pissed. Uh, but that's one thing I really want to know. Hopefully, I'm going to try to probably do this maybe sometime a little bit in a few days. Ace, I'm recording this on Monday. That I want to try to see if I can tweet at Del Toro um, specifically to if he ever gets, I don't know if he will, but... I want to see him ask the audience to stand up for those who believe, only for those audience members to stand up who believe that animation is cinema and not a genre for kids. That is something I want, and I think I will have to probably do that, um, probably not right after this recording, but probably sometime later this week. Makeup and hairstyling, Elvis, um, won both Critics' Choice and BAFTA. Uh, we all thought it was going to be The Whale, but now it's like, Instead of going from Brendan Fraser, we go to Austin Butler's transformation as Elvis Presley. Production design, this is Babylon's award to lose. I mean, ever since La La Land, um, the trend is usually if your movie is centered around Hollywood nominated for production design, it's going to win. Even if how divisive Babylon is, it won both at Critics' Choice and BAFTA. So, And it will be the first film since Baz Luhrmann's Gatsby to win production design without a picture nomination. And that's interesting because Elvis is nominated here. Um, although, of course, the first Avatar did win this. Um, but Babylon is unbeatable here. And it's very interesting, that, uh, looking back at it now, like, almost like 11 years prior, it's odd the artist did not win production design. Instead, it went to Hugo. But ever since La La Land, we went from that to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood to make... Now Babylon. Film editing. As many people want to see Top Gun Maverick win this, and it did win the editing guild for drama, everything everywhere all at once won everywhere else. Critics' Choice, BAFTA, Spirits, even um, the editing guild for comedy. So, yeah, I'm going to be saying Paul Rogers here for everything everywhere all at once. Cinematography. Um, it's either going to be going the Spirits way with Tar, or the Baptist ways with All Quiet on the Western Front. And I think I'm going to lean towards All Quiet on the Western Front. I almost thought of Tar for a bit, um, because if Blanche doesn't win Actress, there could be a potentiality this might win something for Tar. But I'm going to be saying All Quiet on the Western Front. The third easiest category to predict for this year's Oscars, Visual Effects, Avatar, The Way of Water. Next, now we come into Best Actor, Lead Actor. This is one I have not thought of yet because it is, this one is the one category I have not made my final decision yet because it is obviously between both Austin Butler and Brendan Fraser. Butler has the Drama Globe and the BAFTA and Fraser has Critics' Choice and SAG. Now, the thing is, as we have sometimes seen with the uh, makeup transformations, if you win makeup, you, your lead star could potentially truly win. We have seen this like with Darkest Hour. I know we saw this with um, The Eyes of Tammy Faye last year. And sometimes that kind of still kind of continues like with Vice, Bombshell, and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And because with me not predicting the whale, you could say, I would say Austin Butler. But... I'm not really sure yet because some people are saying that he's still using his Elvis voice for his campaigning status, which I don't know what's his real voice because I haven't listened to it um, because I don't know what's his real one or his other one. And another pro with Butler potentially winning this is because Elvis is a Best Picture nominee and The Whale is not. Um, because A24 really could do well because it won almost all the, like, five SAG wins, with the exception of Stunt Ensemble. 
um, because everything was not in there. Uh, but it's just like, is it going to be more of a career win for Frasier? When some people thought the movie was kind of very divisive. But Frasier has been very emotional with his speeches compared to Austin Butler. Because I would say based on the speeches or I'm and because because SAG has a lot more voters than the Academy does because there was um, I found that out, out from some live stream or some like I think somebody like some article has mentioned that. Um, oh boy. So there could be a lot of Academy members that might just not like the whale at all. But there might be some members wondering, why is Elvis in there? Oh man, I, this is the one I'm really stumped at because I do not know who's going to win. Because if somehow Colin Farrell wins, that, that would just be shocking. But he only has the globe for comedy. And Like if he had BAFTA, that could have been a potentiality, but I don't know. Well, the whale... Frazier won at SAG because obviously the whale had the addition with Hong Chow, Hong Chow, and Elvis didn't have any other nominations other than Butler. I think because oh oh man, I I I I'm whatever I say now is gonna oh man, yeah I don't think everyone is really confident yet for best actor here, and oh my gosh. This is probably the hardest one, I think, out of all of them. Oh, man. it's I either want to say Butler or Frazier, but it's just like... Ugh. Butler. I'm saying Austin Butler. I, I don't know what, uh, but I'm, I'm going to be saying Austin Butler because I think um, Elvis getting that picture nomination is probably going to make him get the victory over Brandon Frazier. And also the divisiveness of the whale is. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to say Austin Butler. But this is definitely the hardest acting category to predict. But for actress, I'm going to be saying Michelle Yeoh. Um... I know Kate Blanchett is the obvious go-to choice, and she now holds the record for the most appearances in a Best Picture nominee. And if it doesn't win cinematography, Blanchett still could win actress. But everything everyone at once has been building and building and building up. And I think what kind of convinced me a little bit was because is the date of the ceremonies. Because uh, obviously all, Blanchett and Yo have three awards each. They both have the glo their respective globes. Blanchett has Critics' Choice in BAFTA, and Yo has SAG in the Spirits. I think the dates of the ceremonies might also impact some votes for her. And since Blanchett has already won twice, and this is Michelle Yeoh's first nomination, because I don't know what other roles could potentially get her nominated in the future, I'm going to be saying Michelle Yeoh. Best Director, although um, even though it wasn't a complete sweep because they lost the BAFTA and the Globe, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheiner win their second Oscars that night for Best Director. And only Steven Spielberg has like 25%, I would say, because with the Daniels losing both BAFTA and Globe, it kind of hurts them a little bit. But obviously they won, lost BAFTA with somebody who was not even nominated here, because if Edward Berger was here, then he could have been potential runner-up. But since he's not, it would be Spielberg. And now, finally, the 10 films up for Best Picture. Now, what I do every year is I go by ranking them what I think would be the least likely to the most likely to win. And I think some other people have done this as well. But I'm going to go what I think will be the least likely all the way up to number one with both pros and cons they had throughout this entirety of the award season and also for nominations-wise as well and potential wins. Another aspect for me on what I think would be most likely if you're a major top, at least a top five candidate, you have to be at least nominated for four important categories. Directing, writing, either adapted or original screenplay, film editing, and at least one acting nomination. In, or at least more, but at least one. At number 10, I think we can all agree this is guaranteed going to be last place. 
In the levels of The Blind Side, A Serious Man, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, Selma and The Post, Women Talking, I Have Last Place. Because it only has the screenplay nomination, and although it's guaranteed going to win that, the fact that it doesn't have no acting nominations, doesn't have editing, doesn't have Sarah Polian for director, and also throughout this season of how it's been underperforming, and if we do not count the critics' choice, because how they went with 10 director nominees and 11 picture nominees, the best performance it did was at the Spirit Awards and the SAG Ensemble nomination. If it did win the SAG Ensemble, it might have been ninth. But since it didn't, I have it at number 10. At number 9, Triangle of Sadness. Yes, Ruben Ostland is in for both director and original screenplay. But of course, it doesn't have any acting nominations, which is kind of surprising seeing now that Dolly DeLeon didn't make it for supporting actress. It doesn't have film editing, of course. And the only major picture nomination it had prior to the Oscar was the Golden Globe for Motion Picture Comedy. That was it. Although, yes, it did won the Palme d'Or of the Cannes Film Festival, which is also another pro why I think it's more likely than Women Talking. And even though it's kind of in the levels of Licorice Pizza, only getting original screenplay director and picture, but the fact that it kind of underperformed and not appearing in much major other categories this season for the Oscars, if it, not even for SAG Ensemble, Umble, um, I think it will be ninth place. At number eight, I have Avatar The Way of Water. Guaranteed going to win visual effects, but of course, it doesn't have any of the major categories, of course, but it was expected to get nominated. And James Cameron did have a couple of director nominations, specifically the Globes, but unlike Women Talking and Triangle of Sadness, Avatar did at least was present in other Best Picture categories, not just the Globes for Motion Picture Drama, but also at the Producers Guild lineup. Seven and six were kind of a bit in between between the two films. But based on what I'm guessing, based on my results, of if my predictions are 95% correct, I'm not saying 100. At seventh, I have Top Gun Maverick. It does have um, adapted screenplay. It does have film editing. But it doesn't have any acting nominations. Not for Tom Cruise. Joseph Kaczynski is not a director. Although it has appeared in other picture nominations, it didn't get major any wins throughout the season, and the only win it has so far is stunt ensemble at SAG. And I don't since I don't have it winning it for editing or sound, I have it at seventh place. But it is more like um, the most likely sequel to win over Avatar, regardless. Number six, Elvis. Although it doesn't have original screenplay or director for Baz Luhrmann, it does have editing and even has Austin Butler for actor, who, which I'm predicting to win, and is also going to win, like, potentially winning costume design and makeup and hairstyling, and also getting in for, like, cinematography it was a very interesting choice, and even for production design as well. Um, because of its big tech and sound, because of being in a big technical presence, and getting in for editing and for Butler, I think Elvis would be six for me. And the fact that it was in the picture lineup at the BAFTAs, that also kind of convinced me it's more likely than Top Gun Maverick. And it has a pure picture everywhere else. Um, and even though it didn't get SAG Ensemble, of course. On to the top five. Number five, Tar. It does have everything. It does have Todd Field in for director and original screenplay. It is in for editing, and Kate Blanchett could potentially win lead actress, even has an additional for cinematography. The con is, it hasn't won any picture wins. Um, it didn't win any of the best picture wins throughout the season, it has only been nominated throughout the entirety, and it could potentially maybe either walk away with one, two, or nothing, depending on how big, which what the movie will get to a little bit later on. In, in about a few seconds, actually. Number four, I have The Fablements. It does have Spielberg in for director. It is in for original screenplay. It has two acting nominees with Michelle Williams and um, um, John Hirsch. And it also won picture drama at the Golden Globes. But the con is, um, it doesn't have film editing. And it also missed Best Picture at the BAFTAs, which was a big hit for that movie to miss. It's, like, the BAFTAs just didn't really like the Fablemans at all, except for its script. 
And I don't know what other, I don't know what, I think that was the only thing it was up for, unless, I, was it up for casting? I, I don't have the battle list on me right now, but, um, so yeah, even it even does have a pitcher win and Spielberg does have a director win, um, and if it, if it is going to win anything, it could be original score, and if it goes home empty-handed, is potentially, I'm going to say it will be in fourth place. Number three, All Quiet on the Western Front. It does have a couple of categories it has the potential to win. It is winning international, and it could be winning most likely for sound, cinematography, and maybe adapted screenplay, which is, is, is here, and winning Best Picture at the BAFTAs was a big thing. But there are a couple of cons. Obviously, Edward Berger's not in for director. The film is not in for film editing. And other than the Oscars, the Baptist was the only picture nominee All Quiet on the Western Front had this season. It wasn't in the drama lineup for the Globes, because now non-English language films are now eligible there. It wasn't even in the 11 at Critics' Choice, and it wasn't at the uh, Producer's Guilt lineup. Um, so the fact that it doesn't have director editing and... Baptist was the only picture nomination prior to the Oscars. I have it right now at third. Number two, The Banshees of Inner Sharon. Like Tar, it does have everything it can have to potentially win. It has director, screen, original screenplay, both for Marta McDonough, film editing, and has four acting nominations, with one of them potentially going to potentially win with Carrie Condon. The con is, and it does have the Globe win for picture or comedy, but the con is it lost the BAFTA, of course, to best um, picture over there, which is kind of a good sign because if you win picture at the BAFTAs, you're unlikely to win picture at the Oscars. But since we do not know where McDonough is in the original screenplay race, which he does have the win for the Globes and the BAFTAs, but it's in the same levels as three billboards as I talked about earlier. Although it's a little bit more likely to potentially win because McDonough is in for director. But the fact that it only has one pitcher win and it can only walk away with one acting win or just go home empty-handed, we just don't know where it's at. And I think for number one, I don't need to go into an explanation what I'm going with. You all know what it is. It's everything everywhere all at once. This film has 11 nominations, let alone three nominations for both Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner. It's in for film editing, has four acting nominations, and is most likely going to win at least one acting win, screenplay, director, potentially editing, maybe two if they consider Michelle Yeoh. And of course, it had one picture at the um, Critics' Choice, one at the Producers Guild, The Spirits, and it won the SAG Ensemble, winning three, four out of the five wins. The only one it didn't win was Stephanie Hsu, which was the additional supporting actress nomination. Um, it has everything it has to win for picture, and it even has a couple other categories it got in, like um, the music categories and make costume design. And it is likely to almost win, like, editing. Like, it's almost like going to be one of the bigger best picture winners in recent years. So yeah, A24 releasing a movie at the very beginning of the year, the movie itself campaigned itself all the way to going to be winning Best Picture this Sunday. The only massive con it has is that it lost the um, Picture Globe, Comedy Globe to The Banshees of Inner Sharon and lost the Battle to All Quiet on the Western Front. Those are its only two major cons. But the fact that it won, like swept the guilds and obviously one big of the spirits and one a critic's choice. And it's like probably the big fan favorite movie of the year. It is going to be everything ever world one. So Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner are going to win three Oscars Sunday night. And that's basically it for my Oscar nomination predictions and my last prediction video for the 2023 movie award season. If you're new to the channel, you can hit that subscribe button. Comment down below your predictions on the 23 categories. And that, with this video, comes the end for my video season of the movie award season. And join me again next August for the, the preparations for the 2024 movie award season for the films of this year.